If you're feeling overwhelmed as a creator, it might be time to streamline your workflow. I see a lot of people just getting overwhelmed with the number of tools there are out there that is an AI tool that can do like so many different things. Just really having a maybe like doing a pros and cons list of what each tool can do for you. And if you really need those things or if it's just like a good to have, that'll really like drive your business forward. Nat is the founder of Brand Nat and Future AI Lab. She helps businesses to implement humanized automation to save time and grow revenue. And in this episode of Creators on Air, Nat shares her advice on automating content creation, how to effectively use CTAs and how to work with sponsors. I started it about like two years ago while I was running my e-commerce Uh, store and it was more like an outlet for me to talk about all the things that I learned and wish I knew earlier Um, when running a business it's often a very lonely journey (laughs) Um, and yeah I think I've uh, you know exhausted my friends list on you know talking about business and talking (laughs) about like tech so um, I decided to post on TikTok because um, no one knew me at all on TikTok. So, and like, I knew that if I posted it on Facebook or Instagram and all that, like my friends and family would see it and, you know, I didn't really want that, but it kind of felt really refreshing to go onto TikTok because, um, I felt like I could be totally honest and, um, I kind of just like felt that sense of freedom to speak about whatever I wanted and be really honest about like, things that I learned in business obviously and yeah I mean TikTok just like showed my my content to other people that really resonated with my content and yeah just built a following on on that um so and then after I was posting about like a year into it ChatGPT came out and I was like oh this is really cool um so I posted about it and that was probably my yeah, my first time where I got a million views on that video and I was like, oh, this this must be like <laughs> a hot trending topic. Um, so I just started like continuously posting about that. And then, yeah, um, my TikTok account grew and <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Incredible. And I think it's really interesting yeah. that in terms of like, you know, your focus is on building a business, but you've chosen to focus on AI and tech and automation why do you think that's important for people in business and especially for other creators? Yeah, so I mean, especially if you're starting out or you're bootstrapped as an entrepreneur, which a lot of the times we are, um, you don't have a lot of resources to play around with. So using AI and automation, like I totally wish I had this like a couple of years ago because that would have really helped. Um, but I mean, even without AI back then I was using tools like Zapier uh, you know other automation tools to help because yeah like cut costs and um, you know you don't need to like hire another person you could you know potentially run it yourself um, and have all these other tools working for you 24 7 but obviously like you know once you grow you do need people but um you know once you're starting out like this is a really great way to um you know boost your productivity get more done on a low budget <laughs> so yeah yeah definitely and you're currently on TikTok and you also have your newsletter so how have how has AI and you know different tools helped you with your own process for those platforms um yeah so AI I mainly use um AI like for content creation so um, one of the tools I really love right now is Claude um, for generating a lot of like TikTok hooks um, and generating like video scripts previously I was using like ChatGPT but I felt like it was quite robotic but Claude I guess has a really good grasp on context and making it sound a bit more natural Um, so I'm using that a lot to sort of come up with like 10 to 50 different hooks that I could possibly use. Um, And so that's really helped with productivity and getting more done, essentially. But yeah, I mean, the other tools that I like to use, uh, perplexity.ai to help with like in-depth research um, and like for the news articles um, and all that. And Zapier and OpenAI together to summarize a lot of the the news articles that I'm looking at to to condense it down so that I can like take over 
in the last section. So yeah. Amazing. So like how does um so I'm really intrigued by Zapier especially to automate things. So like what like zaps do you actually use to, you know, do those summaries? Like what what tools connect? Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah, so um I use so there's this like Chrome extension uh from Zapier where you say you're reading a news article that you really like or want to talk about in your newsletter, you can actually pull down the um Zapier Chrome extension and hit like run this automation and it will automatically take that news article and then summarize it with ChatGPT or OpenAI. And then that summary is put into my Trello board or a Trello card so that I have like a list of different like topics that I want to talk about in this week's newsletter. Um, and it's all laid out, like organized um, and summarized with the link to the actual like article um, in case I want to read about it uh, more in depth or remind myself. But it sort of like takes that whole process for just clicking a button and it just automatically throws it in in an organized space for me once I'm ready to write about it. So, yeah, I mean, there's I know there's a lot of like other tools that like you could literally copy the whole article, put it into ChatGPT to summarize and then paste it into Trello, but that's like that takes out that whole step completely. Yeah. With just one. So yeah. So what advice would you give to creators who want to kind of explore automating some of their systems and processes, but they don't really know you know which, you know, what can be automated or what tools to use or how to use them? Like where where's a good starting point? Um I I mean, there's so many tools like I mean obviously you can Actually, my best advice would be go to ChatGPT <laughs> and ask it. Um, honestly, ChatGPT is like my go-to for, <laughs> you know, any sort of information that I'm looking for. Um, but basically, I would tell it what I'm trying to do, like the whole process, mm-hmm. and then ask it, like, how can I automate this using tools like Zapier and NoCode tools? And it could probably come up with a pretty good like initial plan and then you can dig deeper by conversing with it a bit more. So, I mean, I, I do that all the time just to come up with like new ideas and it comes up with ideas that I never even considered. But yeah, the other thing, the other advice I would give is um, sometimes it may be a bit too early to automate. So until you have a process down in place, like you know that every single week you'll do these steps, these five steps, then you start to automate. Mm. Um, If it's something that, you know, you just, you're not sure if it works yet, like you're testing it out, I wouldn't automate that process yet because you don't know if it's going to work or not and optimize for that, like optimize the whole process first before you automate. So yeah, otherwise you just end up automating everything and then like (laughs) you have to chop and change a lot of the time. So yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I feel like one of the fears that, some creators have about AI is it replacing creativity and you know authenticity so what how do you kind of preserve that whilst you're using tech and tools as part of your business yeah so I like to like the whole concept of automation to me I like to automate some parts of it and add my human element afterwards to just really polish it up to make sure that you know I'm coming from a place that you know is authentic and genuine Mm. um because I know like it gets a bad rep when or AI and automation (laughs) gets a bad rep when we're like oh yeah like we can create hundreds of scripts but is anyone really going to read it um or listen to it because if I just literally read out like what ChatGPT gave me in terms of the script like um, or paste that in, which I haven't really done, um, then I'd probably get like a lot lower views and a lot lower um, engagement with it. So what I like to do is use it as a research tool, a business partner to come up with the ideas. And then I make the final assessment um, and edit it to really like maybe like the last 20 percent, but get it to do like 80 percent of the work, um, which still cuts out a lot of time. But, you know, at the end of the day, like people still want to have that human connection and, you know, uh, human touch. So Definitely. And do you feel like there could be the pressure to, I mean, I guess because you're using automation freeing up time, do you think there's more pressure then to be on more platforms? Because, you know, suddenly you're automating things, you're not putting as much time into, you know, 
I don't know, publishing or whatever, so that there's more pressure then to be on more platforms and have a wider reach. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I mean, ultimately, you would want to be on all the platforms because you can reach more people. But for me personally, um, I focused on one platform first um, and got like, I mean, not saying <laughs> really good at it, but like um, just focus on growing that one platform really well and understand it before you move on to other platforms. So for me, I I really grew on TikTok and I learned how to do the short form videos before I moved on to other things like written text, like on, on newsletters, because there's a lot of nuances when you're dealing with different platforms. It's not just about taking one piece of content and I guess repurposing it for another. Um, but because every platform is a little bit different, their requirements are a little bit different. So yeah, I would definitely go with one platform first. And that's not to say that you can't post on every other platform. So what I do is I make content purely for TikTok mm -hmm. and then I repost that onto all the other platforms, post it onto LinkedIn, Twitter, um, YouTube, and Facebook. And the funny thing is all the other platforms that I've posted on, I mean, it's it's gotten some views, but like it's not nothing crazy. But what I found was Facebook Reels has done really well and I've done basically no effort at all, like just literally reposting it onto Facebook. And I've got 190,000 followers on Facebook purely from the content that I reposted wow. from TikTok. One stage, Facebook had more followers than and, than TikTok. Just I didn't Crazy. even create content for, for Facebook. So yeah, that's one of the benefits of reposting it across multiple platforms because you never know like which one's sort of going to hit off. Like I had no idea that you could grow that yeah. much on Facebook, but yeah. <laughs> and what made you choose TikTok? And I guess your newsletter as like your main two platforms. Yeah. So, I mean, TikTok, because I started from there initially, um, but what sort of got me onto newsletters was the potential ban of TikTok in uh, my country or um, in the US, basically. And that sort of got me thinking, like, if I lost all my followers, like I would have nothing. Uh, basically. So I needed a platform where I can reach my audience anytime without having sort of being at the mercy of like uh, <laughs> the platform or algorithms and stuff like that. So yeah, I thought newsletters is a very, it's a great way um, to keep in touch with your audience and also monetize um, as well, which I didn't even know you could do before mm -hmm. <laughs> until you know actually starting one and, and seeing like this whole new world of like you know sponsorships on there and and all that so yeah yeah definitely and um, what have you found to be helpful for growing you know both your tiktok page and the newsletter like what's worked for you well i've found um that you know i use tiktok and and facebook and all these other social media platforms as a form of traffic to the newsletter mm -hmm. so I direct them all like at the end of my videos I'll say like if you want to find if you want a more expanded version of this or if you want to keep up to date with everything I've mentioned here um, then sign up to my AI newsletter and that sort of like prompts people to like move onto the newsletter where I provide different content so like more in-depth content because obviously like text and video are different like ways of communication so that's another touch point that I have with my audience so how do you include that CTA I'm like intrigued because short form content I feel like there's not that much time to have CTA so how do you like do you include a CTA in most of your videos or is it just in the like yeah, description so <laughs> or how do you do it yeah um I, I I post it mainly in the video where I'll show like I'll show bits and pieces of my newsletter in the green screen behind me and I'll just be like oh okay. and I'll read from it and sort of like acting like as if it was a news article and so people it sort of gets people curious like where'd you get that source from like where'd you get that graph from and then I'll be like oh this is from my newsletter so like mm. sign up to my newsletter and I always like show like TikTok doesn't really like you saying link in bio or like 
um, directing you off the platform. So I always like show the actual, my actual profile with the link to actually sign up for. And it's just a pure mention of like, I mentioned the newsletter in most of my videos. So then that sort of like prompts people to be like, Oh, where's that newsletter? And then go and sign up. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's such a clever so, yeah. approach. Um, and you've also <laughs> mentioned already um, sponsorships. Um, so you've sponsored newsletter. How else have you monetized yes. brand now? What else are you doing? Um, so mainly through uh, brand sponsorships on TikTok. And I also do tie it in with like newsletters now. So it's an add on like to my um TikTok sponsorships. So yeah, like the other ways that I monetize um, through these platforms is through affiliate links, which I find really easy to implement in the newsletter itself, as well as like my blog. When people like um, click into the newsletter, I also have a link to my blog. So then it's sort of like it's like a whole ecosystem um, where people can like digest information. Um, and then say I have recommended products, they can click on that as well and also my template that I sell on my store as well and I'll be coming up with a e-course shortly about AI and automations so yeah. (laughs) Sounds really good Um, and in terms of sponsorships how did you approach your pricing? How did you know how much to charge and you know charging (laughs) differently like TikTok newsletter like it's quite a difficult thing I feel. Yeah, that was um, a lot of trial and error. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, so um, I had no idea about how this all worked before, but um, I basically just, I looked online. I remember I looked online on Google, like, how much do you charge for like 10,000 followers? And then it came up with like, this is the average price. Like, I think it was like $100 or something like that. Um, and then I was like, oh, okay. Um, I'll just like mention that. And then they took it straight away. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And so like I started getting more brand deals. And then one of the big brands offered me like a higher price. And I was like, oh, well, this is my new price then. So then people still were taking on that pricing. So then I was like, okay, it wasn't until I grew my following and then there was a tool that I used called hashtag payme.com and that helped, that was like a calculator and I put in all my like stats in there and it said that I should be charging like four times the amount that I was currently charging. And I was like, oh my God, like, okay. So then I literally that day I was like, okay, this is my pricing. And I was sort of like, just held my breath. (laughs) Um, and they came back to me with like a slightly lower price but I was like okay um so yeah and I just like kept trial error because I get like five to ten emails a day kind of thing like just with brand sponsorships on TikTok um and you sort of like gauge your pricing whether if it if you've gone too high and no one's taking it then you Mm. obviously lower it um and so on but yeah I didn't know like how to price all that stuff as well. Like initially when I was pricing, I just literally said, this is the price for a video, but I didn't realize that you could charge for things like ads or like uh, usage rights and link in bio, stuff like that. Like, you know, and so now I'm a bit more aware and putting contracts in place um, to make sure everything's like all, all set. Um, so yeah, and given that learning, and given that there's so many like factors that you can include, like you mentioned, like usage rights and all of that, how comes you've chosen to have like set prices rather than leave everything open to negotiation, like for individual brands? Oh, that <laughs> it's um a lot less going back and forth. I mean, we we still have a lot of going back and forth, but I think that having a set price really helps to sort of like solidify the agreement up front um, and just to set that expectation because yeah if you don't have a price then like it's hard like for both the brand and, and the creator as well like to negotiate and yeah I think that most of the time should be spent on actually creating the content and yeah. working together as opposed to like negotiating which so <laughs> I think that um, Passion Fruit does a really good job with that sort of like applying that set price and sort of reminds me of like an e-commerce style yeah um you know platform for for um ads and buying media yeah and definitely like one of passion fruit's goals was to reduce that back and forth that you were talking about yes I know how painful that can be especially when you're getting so (laughs) many requests like you are um have you found anything (laughs) 
like any ways to secure more sponsorship so like is there anything that you've done that you found really effective to like upsell or like you know to work with the brand more more like repeatedly or anything like that um I think that offering like packages really helps because it's more consistent so like I personally didn't come up with this idea but it was more the brand came to me and they were like okay so you've created like one video for us um, or maybe two or three as a one-off but then though they said like hey can you do like six month contract where you create six videos for us so that's when I sort of like started to package my offerings into like one video three videos six videos like that sort of thing and space it out so that every month like we have a consistent like flow of sponsorships and that's really helped to sort of like upsell and work with brands that I really love uh, and believe in more often so yeah (laughs) amazing yeah and that's one of the other features I guess fashion fruit has is having that package option which I think you already have on your page um do you tend to (laughs) reach out to brands or are you mostly like just relying on brands reaching out to you or is it a bit of both yeah I don't do any outreach oh wow um I do get yeah so I I mean (laughs) passion fruit has helped me a lot with um on the newsletter side like getting a lot of brands through so appreciate that (laughs) (laughs) um uh, like yeah it's really good that you know you guys have that connection with both the brands and the and the creators on the TikTok side. I yeah, I don't do any outreach, but it's more like if I was a creator, uh, I think what helped was um, I created content with the brands that I wanted to work with mm-hmm. and I just tagged them and I created like lots of videos so that. Um, even the brands that weren't actually on TikTok at the time that I really wanted to work with, I just created content just because I wanted to. And I, I thought people get a lot of value out of and just tagging them or like hashtag so that when later on they're on it, they'll be like, they'll look up their own hashtag and then they'll see like, oh, hey, this person's like created a lot of content um, around it and they, they've got views. So then they reach out to you that way, I think. So I think that's how I've like gotten <laughs> that's a really good approach from them, yeah. yeah no I love that yeah. so do you have your passion fruit yeah. page linked in your newsletter and do you have it yeah and on your website or like is it yeah so um it, on, on all my newsletters at the end I have a, like a call to action like these are four ways to like work with me so oh, okay. and passion for it is like in in one of the links where it's like do you want to advertise like do you want to get in front of our audience um in the newsletter and so like here's a link and yeah like to be honest I really love the way that it's cut out so much time because if, if I had to like deal with newsletter sponsorships I would I'd be dead in water <laughs> oh so glad it's helped <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And like, I I didn't really think much of it until I realized like how much time it saved me if I had to go through that. (laughs) Um, So yeah, definitely. It's it's a really awesome uh, platform. (laughs) Amazing. And looking at ahead, what kind of trends do you anticipate in AI and in tech? And how can like creators stay on top of those sort of trends? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are asking, like, how do I implement AI and automations in my business? But I think every company, if not they, I mean, if they haven't already, is becoming an AI and tech company, uh, sorry, an AI and automation company, because, yeah, there's no way, like, to get around it. Um, But being able to sort of identify, like, which tools can cut out a lot of, like, your time and reducing the amount of tools because yeah I see a lot of people just getting overwhelmed with the number of tools there are Mm. out there that is an AI tool that can do like so many different things yeah just really having a you know maybe like doing a pros and cons list of what each tool can do for you and if you really need those things or if it's just like a good to have yeah um, yeah that'll really like drive your Uh, business forward so yeah hopefully (laughs) we can I I can like sort of show uh, more people like compare a lot of different tools and seeing like um, which tools can really help them um, yeah in the in their business definitely I think that's really good advice actually because we like you said we use tools to be less overwhelmed but then we can get so overwhelmed in our like just by seeing how much there is out there exactly so I think that's a really good point is thinking about what's a nice to have versus 
like a must have. Um, I'm yeah, going to end exactly. now with a quick fire round. So I'm going to ask you five questions that I ask all creators that come on air, starting with what's your favorite thing about being a creator? <laughs> um, getting to talk about things that I love and, um, you know, providing a lot of value for my audience. Um, just things that I wish that I knew. Um, I, I have somewhere to voice it out to, yeah. <laughs> to everyone. And what gives you the yeah. most inspiration for what you're creating? Um, probably like my personal experience and um, talking to other business owners and seeing like the issues that they're having and sort of like trying to come up with a solution for them um, that can really help, uh, you know, <laughs> relieve some of the the manual um, labor and stress that they have in their business. So, yeah. yeah. And what's one tool that's helped you most as a creator? <laughs> Definitely ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's basically my business uh, business coach or business Love mentor. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> and what helps your creator work life balance? Um, all the tools, like all the AI tools. Yeah. Um, and tech tools definitely amazing and <laughs> what's, live without them and what's one piece of advice that you would give to other creators um I think persistence and trying not to like obviously look at the metrics but thinking about the bigger picture um because say for example like if you're worried about getting a lot of low views and stuff like that that can that can really like deter um you from creating content but Actually, you know, one of the, I guess, the times that I felt like really discouraged because of the low views, I was coming from a place where I was expecting something like I wanted to get a lot of views. I wanted to like the more that you focus on that, um, I found is not very helpful. Whereas mm. when I switched it around and I thought from a perspective of how do I give as much value? How do I help as many people as possible? Um, that's when everything like started to work. I, I started to get more views, um, and that really helped to break that like uh, mentality of like focusing on like the metrics too much. So yeah, amazing. That's great advice. Thank you so much, Nat, for coming on air and sharing so much about how you automate your workflow and how you work with sponsors. I feel like it's a really valuable um, episode for creators because I feel like a lot of us are trying to streamline a workflow and you've definitely given a lot of great <laughs> advice here oh thank you very much for that. Okay, it was very uh nice to speak to you and you can find nat at future ai lab or on tiktok youtube linkedin or instagram and if you want to reduce the back and forth with sponsors like nat has then check out passion fruit we help to streamline your entire workflow i'll see you in the next one